Okay, good afternoon, uh, good evening, good morning, as the case may be, depending on uh, where you're where you're located. Um, welcome to Astro. If uh, if you're attending the uh, the Astro meeting, I hope uh, hope it's been a good meeting so far. And my there we go. PowerPoint. For some reason, my PowerPoints always start slow. But anyway. Um, today we're going to be kind of doing a, uh, a quick uh, overview of our DOSU 3D Water Phantom. Uh, we like to say better hardware, better data. Uh, we've also um, incorporated a new uh, version of the software, and uh, now we also like to say better software. It's uh, kind of a, um, a good combination of uh, very intuitive software, very, very strong hardware, very accurate hardware that uh, makes up the DOSVIEW 3D Water Phantom. Uh, my name is Hugh Peterson. I'm the product manager for uh, standard imaging for the uh, DOSVIEW 3D. Actually, all our water phantoms are 1D, our DOSVIEW 3D. Um, also for our PIPS Pro software, which is our uh, imager and uh, MLC uh, um, QA software for TG142 and uh, similar. A couple of quick housekeeping points. Um, we're recording this session, so it will be uh, um, emailed. Uh, the recording will be, the link for the recording, I should say, will be emailed to you uh, after the fact. So you can uh, revisit it if you'd like, or you can share it with colleagues uh, um, and coworkers if they have interest in it as well. Uh, please enter any questions in the uh, dialog box for questions. I'll, I'll address those at the end. Um, and uh, just a quick bit of history, uh, standard imaging was incorporated in uh, 1989. So we've just uh, celebrated our 30th anniversary uh, last year. Uh, we're based in Middleton, Wisconsin, maybe about uh, oh, two hours from, uh, from Chicago, if, uh, if you're not quite familiar where Middleton is, and northwest of there. Um, and uh, we basically uh, have have been designing and manufacturing uh, complete QA uh, tools for the last 30 years, including uh, one of our first products, which is our uh, HDR 1000 plus well chamber for brachytherapy, a uh, number of different electrometers uh, that we offer, a full line of ion chambers, our x Raiden line of ion chambers, from the smallest of the small, a 0.007 cc microchamber up to our uh, 16 liter um, spherical chamber and pretty much anywhere in between as well as our uh, w1 and w2 uh, scintillators for uh, for um, dose measurements as well and a number of phantoms and uh, software packages but today i want to talk about the uh, dose view 3d water phantom uh, we introduced this uh the 3d phantom to the market um not quite 10 years ago, but about eight years ago. Um, we've actually, about a year ago, reintroduced uh, a, a new generation of hardware uh, that I'll talk about today. Had made some modifications, some upgrades, and some changes to it for a couple different reasons, which I'll get into. But uh, basically, you know, the objectives of a water phantom, obviously, your acceptance testing, uh, you know, check, check against uh, the manufacturer's uh, stated specs of the LINAC output, commissioning of the LINACs, uh, checking all your energies, your field sizes, your wedges, uh, any other beam modifiers, et cetera. Uh, your annual QA, uh, for example, your TG142 uh, tests, um, and also periodic checks of beam quality as they, as they become needed. Uh, what makes a good water phantom? We kind of hit on all these points, uh, very accurate and very repeatable as far as the uh, the scanning and positions of the uh, of the chamber and the arms. Very high quality raw measurements, uh, saves time in the end. We're not having to do a lot of uh, post-scan processing. Uh, you get good uh, good raw measurements out of the system, um, leaves, you, leaves time and uh, um, schedule for, uh, for other, other tasks. Very reliable hardware uh, year after year. Obviously, something uh, best case scenario, the water fan is not something you uh, you pull out on a daily, weekly, uh, or monthly basis. Uh, maybe quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. So we want to have reliable hardware that's uh, that's available to you as you uh, as you take it out for use. 
easy uh, setup and use. Uh, again, like I mentioned, since it uh, best case scenario is only used on an annual basis, um, we want to make that uh, system easy to set up and uh, and have software that's uh, that's intuitive enough where you don't have to necessarily relearn it or re re educate yourself on the software um, every time you pull it out uh, to to use. And also want to have that uh, flexibility and compatibility with a number of different uh, um, components, the different detectors. Uh, like I said, we have a whole host of different detectors. You can utilize other manufacturers' uh, detectors with our uh, um, Water Phantom as well. Various protocols uh, for, say, for example, TRS-398 or TG-51 or uh, TG-142. So we have the different protocol uh, capabilities as well. Also, the different treatment planning system uh, formats, uh, Eclipse, Pinnacle, um, the uh, um, different ones from, uh, from Electa, you know, uh, Monaco, et cetera. So we want to have the ability to, uh, to import into those different, uh, different treatment planning systems as well. The nice thing about our system is all those formats, uh, the different TPS formats uh, and a couple other non-TPS formats are all included with the system. They're not additional charges. Uh, like you might see with some of the other systems on the market. Uh, very accurate and consistent positioning. We use uh, heavy gauge extruded aluminum frame, which maximizes rigidity, it simplifies the setup, and it maintains that reproducibility. All our uh, positional accuracies and repeatability uh, are all within 0.1 millimeter uh, uh, per axis. Allows for a very uh, precise, uh, quick three-point leveling. We um, we've gone through uh, looking at some of the different uh, functionalities as far as the auto leveling and uh, and things like that. And you know we've just decided you know because you have to kind of run it through its uh, its system um, for the auto leveling. If something does not quite line up or or level itself correctly, you've got to run through that whole process again. And there's no means of doing any kind of uh, uh, fine tuning to it. With our system, you know, it is a manual system, but it is a very quick three-point leveling system, which utilizes a, uh, uh, a very good alignment uh, jig system, which I'll get into in a, in a, in a few minutes uh, as far as the, um, the setup goes. But it, it's a very quick system. We've got a, um, a user, uh, the uh, University of Wisconsin Calibration Lab uses our, uh, our Water Phantom. And... Um, you know, they can get that uh, leveled and set up and scanning in about uh, about 15, uh, 20 minutes. That includes the uh, the phantom fill. So it's pretty quick uh, once you kind of uh, get it, get the hang of it and get um, get familiar with the system. And uh, even before the uh, system walks out the door or ships out the door, um, we we test every every uh, every system on an industrial coordinate measurement unit uh, to make sure that the uh, the accuracy and the performance are verified. We run it through a burn-in test um, to make sure that the uh, the motors and the movement and all the uh, the robot uh, um, movement is is correct and accurate and um, and uh, verifiable. A few different things uh, as far as again designed for ease of use. Uh, the water tank and the frame are mechanically se secured together so they in, uh, ensure long-term integrity. We have a fully integrated lift and reservoir cart uh, with a positioning uh, precision uh, positioning platform, and I'll talk about that in the in next couple slides as well. But we also have an optional lift cart that is that's uh, lift only, so it does not have the reservoir if you uh, choose to go that route. Another nice feature uh, we have in a, uh, what we call the advanced suction drain. It, it basically has a moat around the base of the Phantom which helps pull out the, uh, the residual water and get all the water out of the, uh, the water phantom. So the, uh, the robot um, armature system is not sitting in any residual water uh, after scanning. And that's, that's nice that um, you know, if you don't use distilled water, you don't have, if you have minerals in your water, you won't see any mineral, mineralization uh, adhering to the, uh, to the arms once, uh, once the water is drained out. As I mentioned, we have a positioning uh, platform uh, that has a number of different uh, functionalities to it. You have a course rotational adjustment uh, that locks in at 45 and 90 um, for not only your in-plane and cross-plane scans, but if you want to do um, diagonal scans as well, you can easily lock that in uh, at those 45-degree uh, angles to, uh, to take those diagonals. 
And there's also uh, fine adjustment levers. Um, there's, there's three of them. There's one in the X direction. There's one for the Y direction. And then there's one for rotation too. So you get that course adjustment set up and then you can fine tune uh, the, um, the location uh, of, the, um, of the water tank uh, under, your, uh, under your crosshairs very accurately. As I mentioned, we're, we have a new generation two hardware design. It's a little bit lower profile. We took, a, took away some of the, um, the higher points of the, uh, of the robot system, as we call it, the arm, uh, the scanning arms, and compacted those a little bit. Not only did that improve the, um, the, the footprint of it, uh, it also improved the rigidity, but it also gave us the ability to, uh, to make our system Halcyon compatible. So it will fit in the bore of the Halcyon. We've added um, crosshairs to the uh, system and fill lines specific to the, uh, the Halcyon. Since there are no um, light field uh, uh, crosshairs, you can utilize the lasers for, uh, for your initial setup uh, for, the, uh, for the Halcyon system. Just a couple of uh, images here. Um, as I mentioned, lower profile, more compact, uh, better rigidity with that way. We have wireless capabilities um, with the system as well, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but uh, we also, like I said, have the, uh, the Halcyon specific crosshairs and fill lines. Uh, the fill lines keep uh, the water level at a, at a reasonable amount so you can uh, maintain and, and uh, not exceed the couch uh, limitations for, for weight. Another nice feature for the Halcyon is we've got a, uh, a brass buildup cap that we offer that you can utilize for, uh, for chamber alignment in your system. Uh, obviously, again, without any um, field lights or crosshairs on the system, it's very uh, challenging to position that chamber. With the, uh, the onboard uh, MB imaging system of the Halcyon unit, you can use this brass cap on your, uh, on your ion chamber to get that um, localization of, of the virtual crosshair and align it to the image center of the, uh, of the system for, uh, for chamber alignment. So it helps uh, speed that process up as well. As I mentioned, we have wireless connectivity. Um, and our wireless connectivity is uh, included with the pendant. It's a wireless pendant. Gives you, uh, as you can see here, simple setup and uh, system configuration. You have full uh, movement functionality on the, uh, on the pendant for your, for your probe control in the X, Y, and Z uh, um, directions. You've got probe speed adjustments, uh, fast, uh, slow, and step. And those steps are 0.1 millimeter, uh, um, as I had mentioned. And a nice feature too is the, um, as you can see, not only this, this the screen, um, the um, positional screen, so it has a, has a readout uh, to know where that chamber is at all times, but you can also enable and disenable, disable the, uh, the bias from the, uh, the pendant. Uh, one thing, you know, physicists always kind of say, oh, you know, it's nice to have that just because, you know, if you go out, you set your, you turn on your, um, your, your bias at the, uh, the console, realize that you need, you forgot something in the room or you need to make an adjustment on the chamber, whatever. Um, you can do that from inside the room. You don't have to go back out uh, to the console to, uh, to disable the bias. And there's also an initialize button uh, and origin setting button on the, uh, the pendant as well. Uh, additionally, wireless, um, in a wireless uh, sense, uh, we have the ability to use a system either wired to the PC, or we also include uh, with, the, with the system a wireless uh, radio system using a uh, um, XB uh, type of, uh, um, well, I guess it's more of a robust, uh, a more robust uh, Bluetooth type of connection uh, called, uh, called Zigbee. And um, that gives you that ability to basically connect wirelessly for having less wires to the, um, to the PC. Uh, something that we we you know had a lot of experience over the years are electrometers with our with our standalone electrometers uh, not only our um, Max 4000 and our Supermax which are very much workhorses for uh, for absolute asymmetry but our uh, our electrometer that we produce for um, for Accurate for the tomotherapy system which is their scanning electrometer um, we've kind of incorporated a lot of that functionality a lot of the expertise into our electrometer for the dose view. It's a charge digitizing electrometer, which uh, enables our high speed acquisition. It's got a 10 uh, femtocoulomb resolution. You've got a dual polarity bias voltages, um, and those, bo those bias voltages are independent as well. So you can turn them on and off 
So if you're using a uh, ion chamber for a reference uh, probe and maybe a diode for uh, for a scanning, um, you can uh, turn those biases off uh, for the diode um, independently of the uh, of the reference. As I mentioned, we've got some uh, uh, a three-point leveling system, and we actually have uh, a nice um, time-saving alignment jig that uh, that we offer or we include with the system that gives you the ability to kind of quickly uh, and um, and uh, accurately set up your uh, your, your runouts for your chamber uh, um, carriage. And you'll see here, uh, we have this this water alignment jig right here, and then this uh, drawing of it, you can kind of see how that lays out. Uh, utilizing the crosshairs and the X on the front, you can tell your levels uh, very easily if there's any distortion in the image of the X, you're either high or uh, low in the water. If you have a, uh, uh, a nice X, um, marking uh, the spot here that gives you uh, indication that you're at the right position same with the leveling uh, on the side if you're seeing um, misalignment of that uh, that crosshair on the water level you have the ability to uh, to level that and adjust it accordingly and uh, you'll see here too also we have a wide array a wide array of um, chamber holders that are included with the system anything from our scanning our uh, 0.125 scanning chambers our a28 uh, from x Raiden, as well as uh, farmer chambers. So if you want to do your uh, your annuals or your monthly uh, depth measurements, your TG51 measurements, you can do that. Uh, three different uh, parallel plate uh, ion chamber holders as well. Um, we have chamber holders for micro chambers. So there's a whole host of different chambers, including a uh, what we call a universal chamber to hold just about any thimble type chamber uh, available. And uh, we also have a feature with the uh, system. It's an automatic uh, uh, fine beam center in the software. It automatically locates the uh, the XY center and defines the origin. And then it performs, uh, moves that chamber out to uh, in the in-plane and cross-plane direction to the 50% line of the uh, of the beam, and then gives you any uh, automatic shifts or that are uh, recommended to get that chamber centered. So it's a nice feature too, a little automation feature in the uh, in the system to help for that alignment. It also includes two of our uh, x ray and A28 scanning chambers. Uh, it's a 0.125 cc volume. Uh, the nice thing about it too is it's a, it's a spherical collecting volume. So whether you're going in plane and cross plane, you don't you you still have a symmetric measurement uh, for for your reading. You don't have to uh, make any ad adjustments or account for any uh, ellipse elliptical uh, um, collecting volumes with the system. It's a homogeneous uh, Shanka C552 air equivalent plastic in the collector garden shell, so it's very low Z material throughout the chamber. Um, waterproof, very very robust. Uh, it's not uh, not fragile like a graphite chamber. Uh, or it does not have any kind of um, it doesn't have any kind of uh, conductive coating that flakes off over time uh, due to uh, radiation exposure or mishandling. So they're always uh, always ready to go. And because of that, we have a five year warranty on our chambers too. So it's um, you know we're very uh, confident in our in our chambers that uh, that we and that 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 X rating quality that we offer a five year warranty. Another nice thing about our chambers is they are, they are repairable. So should a uh, shell break, um, which does happen on rare occasion, but uh, it does, they are repairable. You don't have to trash uh, and throw away the whole chamber. You can get that to typically um, repaired at a much, much reduced cost of uh, than buying a new uh, new chamber. And then it's uh, also has the ability to, the, the Water Phantom also has the ability to use uh, any any of our uh, offerings for for detectors, including our diodes and our uh, scintillators that I had mentioned, as well as uh, other manufacturers' uh, ion chambers. Um, very easily uh, serviceability and uh, very you know to minimize minimize the downtime. We've got user user replaceable components uh, throughout, including uh, our motors, the motion control unit, cables, power supplies. Um, nice thing about the motors are fully interchangeable uh, and they're they're self-aligning so if, if you do need to for some reason change out a motor which has happened on occasion very rarely but we can send out a motor 
and basically it's four uh, four hex uh, hex screws that uh, allow you to pull the motor off, put the new motor on, lock up the coupler, and they align themselves to the uh, the adjacent uh, uh, motor. So it's about a really it's maybe a five minute uh, swap. Very very easy, very easy accessible. And the uh, the lift card and the Phantom both use identical uh, interchangeable power supplies as well. So now I'm going to jump into uh, into the software and um, kind of do a quick overview of the software. I don't want to get uh, in too deep into it. Um, just kind of give you some idea of how easy it is to use. Um, again, as I mentioned, this is a, just a quick overview of our uh, of our dose view. If you want something more in depth, we'd be happy to uh, to set up a uh, an individual um, web demo uh, for you, so we can kind of show you uh, the, the more in depth ins and outs of the software and uh, the system itself. But uh, very easy uh, left to right, top to bottom navigation. So if you've you know obviously ever used a a, a PC or a Mac uh, and the Windows based system, uh, very easy to uh, to use. Uh, have very intuitive menus for scan queue setup for measurement as well as analysis. And um, basically, let's uh, let's jump into the software. I will uh, show you that. So one thing you notice is uh, this is uh, our new software. We've we've removed the 3D from the main software um, name because we actually have incorporated our 1D uh, uh, software. We rewrote the 1D software, incorporated it into the DoseView software, if you will. So now you have the uh, the 3D component, and if you're utilizing our 1D uh, water phantom, you have the 1D as well. In this case, we're going to jump into the uh, the 3D side, and this is uh, basically you have three three tabs. You've got your setup tab, your measure tab, your analyze tab. Uh, this is where you would set up uh, different uh, clinics and machines, or I'm sorry, clinics and machines. So for example, um, got a, clin a clinic here, um, SI clinic. And then you can add your machines to that here very easily. Uh, about five pieces of information to set up your clinic, name, location, contact, phone, email of a contact, uh, your machines, basically very similarly, name, the manufacturer, the model, uh, what your SAD is, the serial number, um, optional comments if you'd like. And then we also uh, require the um, the energies and uh, DMAX uh, um, for the different energies for our uh, for your Linux as well, so those get added. But that's all there is to setting up your clinics and machines. Detectors again, very simple as well. Um, add the different types of detectors, uh, name, manufacturer, etc. Got a few here set up. Uh, got an A18, a couple of A28 uh, scanning chambers. I'm going to skip the scan cues. I'll get back into that in a second. Just a quick over, quick jump over to preferences. And this is where you can set up your uh, CSV delimiters, your decimal separators, depending on your region. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, the U.S. typically uses periods. Uh, elsewhere, uh, pretty much the rest of the world uses commas uh, for um, as a decimal separator. Uh, date formats can be uh, uh, changed as well as time formats. So those are all capable within the system, too. Um, jumping into back into scan queues, you'll see I've got a few queues set up, but they're very, very easy to uh, to set up. This is actually something that uh, we kind of really went through um, in depth to make sure that the, the scan queue setup was something that uh, was very, very easy, very, very quick for the user. Uh, we know in the past some of the systems, including our own uh, previous generation of software, you know, it was a it, uh, queue generation, um, scan queue generation was was a quite a cumbersome task. We wanted to uh, kind of simplify it and make it a little easier and and much faster because you know it's something that uh, that it you know went from an arduous task with some of the older systems to very easy with that with our system. And you can see here there's there's four uh, components here. We've got the general component, the energies, field size, and scan types. Kind of self-explanatory, but I'll kind of walk through those. And you'll see that they are our mark not set. Um, nice thing about the software too is it kind of walks you through and guides you and tells you what what has to be done before you uh, before you move on. So let's see. I'm going to call this just test astro scan since it's astro, astro time. Um, I'm going to do maybe six MV uh, on this one just kind of to show you a setup. You choose your medium, whether water or air. Obviously, most typically you'd be using water. 
the modality, whether it's a uh, photon, uh, if you are using triple F photon or um, electron, so you would choose those accordingly. Your field definers, whether they're jaws or in this case, let's use the MLCs. We can also do it for cones. And if you're using um, electrons, uh, you can set it up with an electron cone. And any modifiers, um, wedges or cutouts uh, you might have, in this case, uh, we'll, we'll do none. Energies, uh, this is where you would choose your energies. Like I mentioned, I'm just going to do a 6 MV scan here. You can easily add, um, add energies. That pops up and populates. You can uh, toggle that on and off, or you can easily uh, delete it uh, um, as well. So I've got my 6 MV uh, here. I'm going to choose my field sizes now. I want to do maybe, uh, I'll do 10 by 10 and 20 by 20 for this, uh, for this set. And then, uh, so you'll see now these are all being marked complete. Go to my scan types, and I want to choose for this, I want to go in plane, then cross plane, and depth. You have your ability to do your diagonals or your half scans here as well. And you'll see once I chose some of those, I've got a couple of other uh, um, selections here. I've got my depths, uh, my CAX offsets um, that got added to it. So my depths, uh, I'm going to choose a couple of depths. I want to do, um, let's see, 6MV, so I'm doing a DMAX. Let's do one at 10 and let's do one at 20. Um, and then CAX offsets, if you want to do any off-axis uh, scanning, you can set those up very easily. If I want to do maybe uh, 5CM, I can add that, and I can do a 5CM. But in this case, you know, keep it simple. I just want to do a um, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, isocenter uh, cross uh, for, for this scan set. But you'll see here, uh, I've, right now I've got a total of 14 scans for this scan set uh, um, generated. The last thing, I've got scan mode. And a couple different things here. Uh, for profiles, you can choose um, step and continuous, or step or continuous, I should say. Uh, we have the ability to set up either single or multiple zones for different resolutions. So if I want to choose some uh, multiple zones, say I want to have um, lower resolution in the uh, in the tail region, in the flat region, but in the uh, in the penumbra region and the uh, and the shoulder region, I want to get a little higher uh, resolution, so I can set that resolution uh, a little tighter tolerance at one millimeter so I get more uh, more data points there. And should I choose, this is all set up in millimeters for step, if I choose um, continuous, it changes that to millimeters per second. And you can choose those zones, you can change the size of those zones as well. Your overscan distances can be set for uh, either centimeters or percentage of the full width half max. Um, for uh, for the profiles, um, I want to go back to change that back to depth and just do a single. Uh, my depth, uh, same thing, uh, step or continuous. Nice thing here too is um, because, uh, say for example, my Dmax for 6MV is at 1.5, my resolution is done at uh, at two millimeters. So forcing that poison point at Dmax will automatically force uh, a measurement at that 1.5 uh, centimeter Dmax uh, point in the depth uh, depth measurement. So you can force that point at Dmax and then it will kind of uh, revert back to its original scan path uh, and complete um, after it uh, does that measurement point. But you can see now all my points are here are, are complete. So I can save that. And you'll see my uh, Astro test scan is there. So now I'm ready to move on to my measure page. Um, setting up similarly here, you can see the things I need to uh, to address. I need uh, to connect my water phantom. In this case, I've got a, a demo 3D. So I want to connect that and initialize that. Choose my detectors. I want for my field detector, uh, my A282, maybe my A281. For, uh, for reference. Nice thing about this too is if you do choose uh, something like a diode that doesn't call, doesn't call for a, um, doesn't call for a bias or you don't use bias with diodes, when you choose your electrometer, it will not allow you to set a bias on the uh, on that detector if it's a, if it's a diode is chosen, thereby protecting not only the electrometer but also the diode itself from uh, from blowing out the front end or damaging the diode. So when I want to set my uh, set my bias, I want to apply that to my field and to my reference. 
And you'll see now all my scanning uh, components are ready to go. As I had mentioned one thing though, I did mention the um, locate beam center. And basically as I do that, um, I can do that both in my cross plane and in plane. I wanna locate that. It'll run out to the 50% uh, uh, measurement points of the, uh, of the beam in both the cross plane and in plane directions. And then when it's complete, it will give you any kind of uh, cross plane or in plane shifts that are necessary to shift that origin to make sure that that chamber uh, is centered in the, uh, in the beam. And then for my, uh, now that we actually have that done, we wanna go and actually do our, uh, our scanning. Um, I can load my queue and I wanna load my, uh, my test astro scan. And it's telling me basically you wanna maybe make sure that your electrometer is zeroed, which I will do here. I can zero that electrometer. I can uh, set to normalize. Um, so my normalization point in this, uh, at Dmax, I want to go to that position. I want to normalize, normalize, so I can close that, and I'm ready to scan. Then all it entails then just uh, starting, and you'll see I've got a green uh, um, progress. Uh, this is the active scan and a progress percentage here for that particular uh, particular scan. So while these are scanning, I want to maybe jump ahead to the, and show you the analyze uh, in the interest of time. I can grab some, uh, maybe a few scans here, maybe a couple of uh, profiles and maybe a depth scan. Bring those in uh, accordingly. Uh, I've got a few different things um, you can do. Uh, I can see my profile. I can see, choose to see my depth. Um, I can choose all at once. For my depth, uh, if I want to change that, it already has actually been changed from, from ion to, uh, to dose. I've applied that filter previously on a demo, but uh, you can uh, convert these to dose very easily and then uh, take, your, uh, take your PDDs and actually uh, produce and export a uh, PDD table uh, for use in the uh, treatment planning system. Got a number of different filters here. You've got a couple of smoothing filters, uh, Gaussian and a boxcar. You have a um, point edit uh, function. So you can, if you have a wonky um, point for some reason, you can uh, edit that point accordingly. You can normalize to a, to a value. You can normalize it at, uh, at max. You have the ability to normalize it at a specific depth as well. And then you can also, you can shift. And then here is your, uh, you can change that, convert that um, ion depth measurement to a, uh, to a dose measurement uh, as well. And those, um, those scans here will show you, in this case, this depth scan, I've got my metrics here. I can see my, uh, my five uh, centimeter line, my 10 centimeter line and the percentages, et cetera. So you have those, uh, and then also you click on, oh, so you'll see now, as I was scanning in the background, if you remember, um, this gave me a uh, not only an audible notification, but a dialog box telling me that something needs to be uh, changed in the uh, in the scan library. So I'll go back over to measure, and you'll see that the first um, number of scans here were completed. Um, I make my change of my field size or depth or whatever uh, I'm directed to do, start my next batch of scans. And then those will uh, complete in the background as well. But um, nice thing about as uh, with the um, with the software, the profile again, couple of uh, couple of um, smoothing algorithms here. Again, point edit. We've got the ability to uh, to normalize to a value. We've got normalize at the center. We can center the scan. We can um, check your average uh, symmetric. We can mirror it uh, plus to minus minus to plus we can shift or i'm sorry flip and we can shift so you have all the uh um, different uh filtering uh capabilities and and adjustment capabilities for your uh, post scan processing uh available to you as well uh, as far as the metrics go um let's see you can choose your uh your different um protocols the apm or your ic or uh, Electa's uh, USA uh, protocol, Varian's, 
uh, triple F protocols or AARB, which I believe is the uh, Indian um, uh, protocol. So you have the ability to uh, to choose to take a look at your metrics and your filters as well. And here, I, in this case, I don't have any filters set. Um, my metrics showing me my flatness and uh, symmetry, etc. My central axis, my penumbra widths. Uh, I think our scans have completed, and they have. You can see they're all marked at uh, at 100 now. So I can either add another queue, I can clear these out, uh, but they'll, they're automatically saved, so I can go and uh, do the analy analyzation of those as well. Um, and then, uh, you know, with our with our uh, export, um, you know, there's any number of different exports you can do uh, for the specific scans that I've got selected. I can go uh, set them up uh, for export to Eclipse, to Monaco, um, Electa's uh, QA uh, management system, Aqua, Phillips Pinnacle, uh, uh, Research Rayplan. You can also um, export them in DoseView format. So if you have another uh, station of the software somewhere you can you can export that into and uh, import that into another uh, another dose view software uh, csv uh, pdds you can do your pdd tables and then you can also uh, convert those pdds to tprs and uh, and export um, a calculated tpr uh, table as well so that's kind of an overview um, you know we have the ability to import um, import uh, legacy scans uh, as well so if you've got an older uh, system you're replacing uh, say IBA or PTW you can actually import those uh, those scans into a, into our system for um, comparison and um, you know with as far as comparisons go uh, I can kind of give you a, just a little little heads up on what's coming uh, we're adding some some new uh, advanced comparison tools in a, in, a, in our next version um, which will have some gamma uh, analysis comparisons as well. So there, that's something to uh, to look forward to. You can also compare it to, um, you can bring in, we'll have the uh, the varying gold beam data. So you can do uh, comparisons to the uh, to the gold beam data as well. Um, so it's some few things we're working on for, for some future uh, releases of the software, including uh, some enhanced reports as well. Right now the reports all, um, are exported as uh, CSV files to give you uh, full um, functionality um, capabilities to to generate uh, those reports and, and build your own reports as well. So we're also going to have some uh, some enhanced uh, reporting in the in the near future. But like I said, that's just a uh, kind of a quick overview of the software. I wanted to kind of run through it, kind of give you just a just kind of a taste of what uh, what our software can do and what it uh, what it has. Um, available to you. I'm going to kind of jump back now to our PowerPoint, if I get to the right one. And uh, okay, so a few, uh, just a quick summary, some of our hardware um, highlights. Uh, again, it's a structurally rigid design, uh, very good repeatability and accuracy. Everything is precise. Uh, um, positional positional precision within 0.1 millimeter per axis. The uh, the system with our with our leveling system and our uh, our our water alignment jig, our, our uh, service alignment jig, offers very quick setup. You have the wireless functionality for ease of uh, uh, setup, ease and time saving, um, including the uh, the wireless pendant, so you're not kind of saddled with uh, with wires trying to walk around the the uh, the phantom and get uh, things lined up accordingly. You got a fast acquisition dual channel electrometer with the independent bias, uh, very intuitive and versatile uh, detector alignment system, as well as a number of uh, um, individual detector holders to kind of cover just about any kind of detector you would want to use with the system. And touching on the software, again, very easy left to right, top to bottom navigation. We want to uh, kind of keep it uh, keep it simple and uh, and and a clean interface. Uh, Giving you the tools you need to do, but um, but not make it overly complex. Um, quick queue setup uh, and something I didn't touch because, like I said, as a quick overview, you have full copy and editing functions of those uh, of those scan queues. No hidden features, uh, as you saw, everything was kind of at your fingertips uh, for the uh, for the setup, the measurement, and the um, and the analysis of the uh, of the scans. 
your choice of step or continuous scanning with those multiple zone resolutions uh, to get a little more detail in some of the more critical areas of, uh, of the scans. Full export to uh, any, new, any number of uh, treatment planning systems uh, uh, and different formats. The nice thing about that too is all those are included. It's, it's not an additional cost on our system. So, you know, if you have a, a, a clinic with multiple uh, vendors as far as your, um, as far as your uh, Linux go, uh, you don't have to pay individually for each, each treatment planning system. You know, those are all included. We've got the import functionality for your legacy scan data. Say again, uh, like I mentioned from, you know, if you have an old IBA or an old PDW scanning system that you uh, are looking to replace um, or have uh, scan data from those, you can uh, import that into, uh, into the dose view and, uh, and view it and, and use it for uh, comparative tests uh, or comparative uh, data as well to more recent scans using the dose view. And it's very straightforward post, post scan processing and metrics uh, included in the system too. And like I said, the nice thing about our system is, you know, the raw data you get out of it um, is, is excellent and typically very little post scan processing is, uh, is required. But um, beyond that, uh, uh, I want to thank you uh, for your time. That's, uh, just like I said, I want to give you a quick overview today. Um, you can contact uh, your area rep or distributor at sales at standardimaging.com if you want to uh, take a more in-depth, uh, deeper deeper dive into the uh, the dose view. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, to set that up. And otherwise, I, uh, I thank you for your time today. If you're attending the Astro meeting virtually, I hope it uh, is a beneficial meeting for you. It's a little little odd. I know I. Um, Doing it virtually kind of missed the uh, the, the time to uh, have face to face, uh, as I'm sure you do. But uh, it gives us um, at least some semblance of uh, of normalcy, I suppose, having uh, to be able to uh, attend the talks and, uh, and and seminars. But again, thank you very much. If uh, I'm going to quick take a peek and see if there are any questions. Um, doesn't look if, if there are, but if you do after the, uh, after the fact, feel free to again, contact sales at standardimaging.com uh, and, uh, your regional rep, uh, or distributor will, uh, get in touch with you, uh, and they can, uh, convey any, um, answers or any questions to me that you might have for the, uh, for the water fan. Otherwise, I thank you very much for your time. Have a good afternoon, good evening, or, uh, rest of your morning.